Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode of Let's Play Forge. So after the terrible episode of Spelunky, I really feel like uh, relaxing a bit by playing a bit of Forge. Because usually I win at these games, unlike Spelunky where I, I almost always lose. So yeah, let's keep our current hand and let us begin. I really need to feel better about myself and improve my confidence with a game of Forge, otherwise I will just be really sad. So okay, I'm apparently I'm, play, I'm playing against Pliniana Deathwielder and uh, I have a feeling that I, she will be using a black deck. So that's a bad sign. But uh, we will see exactly how this is going to work. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how this will play out. But let's try to enjoy ourselves either way. So he summoned Tethered Mummy, and which is a 1 slash 2 zombie jackal. And when Tethered Mummy dies, each opponent loses 2 life. That's not that great. Let's place down another land and let us continue. You know, he enchanted Tethered Mummy with Cartouche of Ambition. And uh, basically, what Cartouche of Ambition does is that. When it enters the battlefield, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Since I don't have a, a creature on the battlefield, he didn't do that. And enchanted and the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has a life link. So tethered mummy right now has uh, two slash three stats, which is quite nice. He's going to attack me with it. That kind of sucks. Let's put down another mountain card and let's end our turn. He's going to attack me with Tethered Mummy once again, and now he, play, he plays Luxa River Shrine, which is an artifact, and for which, for one mana and when tapping, he will get one life, and then he will get to put a brick counter on Luxa River Shrine, and then just by tapping, he gains two life, activate this ability only if there are three or more brick counters on Luxa River Shrine. So it's basically just a healing card. I don't really like that, but uh, yeah, I, uh, there's nothing I can say about it. Now, I wish I could summon Manticore Eternal, but that would cost me 2 red mana and 3 other mana, and I have 2 red mana and only 2 black mana, so uh, I don't have the free necessary to summon it, so I will just end my, uh, my turn. He's still going to attack me with Tethered Mummy, and now he summoned Giant Spider as well. I will place down a mountain card and I will summon you know what I will cast torment of venom on tattered mummy to remove him from the field let's put down another swamp card Let's cast another Tor Torment of Venom just because we can. So now Torment of Venom is 1 slash 1, which kind of sucks for him. He did not attack us anymore, so now I can finally summon Manticore Eternal. And with Manticore Eternal on the field, I expect some good stuff to happen. Okay, let us summon Emberhorn Minotaur, just because I like him. And now let us attack with Manticore Eternal. And now we're finally starting to do significant damage to him. Now, can we summon Inferno Titan? One, yeah, I think we can. That's awesome. I got Inferno Titan summoned on the field, so now I get to choose how I distribute free, free damage among uh, whichever targets I want. So first of all, I will distribute one damage to Giant Spider, who is 1 slash 1 at this point, and then 2 damage I will distribute to Liliana Defolder. So yeah, 2 to Liliana Defolder, 1 to Giant Spider. That was enough to kill Giant Spider, now let's Alpha Strike him. With everything that we've got. Emberhorn Minotaur, yes, this is good. I really like this. So he summoned Decimator Beetle and it's a white card, I did not expect that. 
So the Decimator Beetle is a force left 5 insect creature, which when Decimator Beetle enters the battlefield, put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on target creature you control. He put, he put it on his own of Decimator Beetle because he had no other creature on his side of the field. And also, whenever Decimator Beetle attacks, remove a minus 1, minus 1 counter from target creature you control and put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on up to one target creature defending player controls. That sucks, but it shouldn't really matter that much. We will double the damage that, uh, let's see, which one do I want to double? Let's double the damage that uh, uh, Inferno Titan will do, just because, and let's Alpha Strike him. Now I get to decide how I distribute my damage, so let's do free damage to my opponent. He blocked me, but now he only has 2 life left. And uh, my opponent summoned Crocodile of the Crossing, which is a Crocodile 5-4 creature with haste, which means that it can attack in the same turn that it is summoned in. And also, when Crocodile of the Crossing enters the battlefield, put a minus 1, minus 1 counter on target creature you control. That's nice. So he put it on himself again. He has a lot of creatures which require putting minus 1, minus 1 counters on his own creatures. Which is quite random, but okay. Yeah, I don't really care of the order. He, he, we get to do that in. He's just dead. I won. Fair and square. Next match. I'm doing quite well. Now, this is my starting hand and I have no land cards. So, I'm going to Mulligan. Again, no land cards. And I get to pick exactly one card to return to my deck, but it doesn't really matter because I genuinely have no land cards. Like, this is terrible. M Mulligan a second time. What are the chances to get such terrible cards? Okay, I will uh, put back in my deck a uh, Granitic Titan and a Kindled Fury. At least this is a bit better. And he already summoned Festering Mummy, which is quite nice. I'll put down a Swamp card. He attacks me with Festering Mummy. And he also summoned Tattered Mummy. Okay, let's put down a Mountain card. Nothing more to do. He attacks me with both. And then he summons Dune Beetle. That really sucks. Let's put down a Wasteland Scorpion to make sure that he won't attack me anymore. Wasteland Scorpion has Death Touch, so it's really awesome. Let's now summon uh, Ember Horn Minotaur. Yeah, let's end our turn. Let's put down uh, Desert of the Glorified. And now let's summon Carrion Screecher. Now. This should be sufficient to block any of his attacks. Let's put down another creature. Can I summon Inferno Titan just yet? I can. Excellent. So now let's do free damage to whichever target creature we want to do damage to. Let's do damage to Tattered... Two damage to Tattered Mummy and one ta damage to Festering Mummy. Yeah, just like this. And now let's just... oh. What just happened? Why did one of my creatures die? When Festering Mummy dies, you may put a minus one, minus one counter on target creature. Ah, and so he destroyed my Karen's creature. How annoying. But it won't matter that much. I'll first strike his ass. And yes, I will... Uh, I will... Uh, uh, how was it called? I will... Uh, Uh, enhance or exert uh, Ember Horn Minotaur. Yeah, let's go with this. So I did some damage to him. I think he's pretty much just fucked. Either way, how you look, regardless of how you look at it, might as well just beat the crap out of him. 
Yeah, he has no more creatures to work with. He summoned Decimator Victor, which is not going to do him much good. And now I will uh, enchant with onward my Wasteland Scorpion. And now it's time to Alpha Strike him with everything that we've got. Auto. Let's do free damage to him. Yeah, he's going to block me, but it won't matter. I just won. Let's get a booster card from our the Devastation booster set. So I won from him a Decimator Beetle. Not that great. And also I won a Harsh Mentor, which is a human cleric creature, which can get summoned for one red mana and one other mana. It's got 2 slash 2 and it's got the effect of whenever an opponent activates an ability of an artifact, creature or land on the battlefield, if it isn't a mana ability, Harsh Mentor, deal, ha harsh mentor deals 2 damage to that player. Uh, I'm not that incredibly impressed. Let's see another random rare. Champion of Ronas, which is a jackal warrior that can be summoned for one green mana and three other mana. It's a free slash free creature, which is pretty nice. Uh, and which has the effect of when you, uh, you may exert Champion of Ronas as it attacks. When you do, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. I'm gonna guess without uh, paying for its mana cost. Let me put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. I'm gonna guess without paying its mana cost. That's what this implies. Okay, that's awesome. Thank you very much for watching.